Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Thriving Dotties podcast. Today, I'm delighted to be delighted to be joined by Christy, Christy Holt. Looking forward to our conversation today, Christy. Yeah, me too. Uh, thank you for having me on. Yeah. So Christy's done a little bit of listening to other episodes of the podcast before she comes on, which always uh, I love to hear that. Um, so thank you for doing that. Thank you for making time to do that and and, and for your little co- uh, contribution to increasing our statistics here <laughs> on the driving adult age, right? I love to learn off other people as well. So, um, no, I, I just find it fascinating. And I get a lot from it as well, listening to, especially the adoptees as a birth mum. So, yeah. yeah. And it was nice to learn a little bit about you as well. Yeah. <laughs> and you're still here. <laughs> Despite what you learn. Um, yeah. So, the, it, yeah, it is It is about, it, it is all about learning um, and uh, because I'm really into learning too, I, I it often um, throws me when other people aren't into learning. Yeah, and so like if if I could have a sticker that I if I had a sticker on my forehead to look at or a sticker on my mirror to look at look at in the on the bathroom mirror while I'm shaving every morning, it would be to say, "Don't expect everybody to be like you, Simon." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I can relate to that. Yeah, yeah. Because um, we do, right? We just, and, and then we're 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 appalled by the way people. This is me, right? So then I'm I'm appalled by the people, the way that people, um, I don't know, turn up late to the pub, you know. But you know, like it, it, it's uh, we we go through life, I think, uh, expecting a lot of us go go through life expecting other people to be like us and and they're not um, mm-hmm. and uh that oh, we were just talking about that when with the technology stuff and how people are, on it call centers seem to have ice rather than blood in their yeah. veins and and the question is how 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 are they like that and uh, and i guess I, I i would like to be like that when dealing with tech but i i wouldn't like to be somebody that's going through life without heart you know coming at yeah. it from a full-on left brain robot type approach you know um yeah that, that wouldn't yeah. be much fun would it no that's why i'm glad that i got to experience life before technology i suppose yeah. you know being a child and being able to go you know playing out we have a lot of children like the xbox now don't they and the computers and I think that played a massive part in changing society. Technology took over some of it for the better, some of it maybe took over yeah. a little bit too much, I think. Yeah. 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 So th- thriving, um, what does thriving mean to to you? Well, it's, it's a really hard one to answer that because when I think of thriving, you want to be at your best. But how do you get to thrive and to be at your best when you have had a life of trauma? Um, so, yeah, trauma has played a massive part into my life. So I am a birth mum. But trauma actually started in my life before I came a mum. From about the age of five or ten. Um, so there was a lot of processing in that. Um, a lot, a lot of things happened from a young age. Um, my dad was a drunk. My mum got us out of there. She kept us very safe. Um, in the end, you know, it took a long time to get out, but um, there was a lot of violence. Um, and that I carried through my teen- teenage years. That I suppose shaped me into somebody that I really wasn't. I had to fit into going from a private area into a council estate, shall we say. Um, you know, my mum dressed me in big frilly dresses and when we moved to this council estate, I had to fit in. So there was a lot of that growing up. And I suppose I took them, them traumas into adulthood, um, very young adulthood from the age of 16 to 21. I ended up in a domestic violence relationship, which is how I became a birth mother. Um, so thriving didn't come easy. Thriving only just started coming, I suppose, in my thirties, and that was when I started taking an understanding of myself, who I am, what had I been through, what had happened to me. Um, 
adoption, adoption only. I only sort of started taking an interest in that in three years ago. And it's now become one of my passions. So I feel like, don't get me wrong, in between all that, I have worked full time. I went into construction. Um, I did my MVQs in business and management. Um, and I, I did, I suppose I did feel like I was thriving. I was getting to a good place then, but there was still a bit of an empty empty hole. There still is an empty hole. And I think it's a bro- progressive thing through life to be able to thrive. When will I get to that point where I say I am really thriving? I'm not too sure. It's yeah. still ongoing. Yeah. There's a, there's a, a lot there. Um, Sorry. <laughs> there's that, a lot to my story as well. To that, refer to that, that, that's yeah. good. It's good that there's a lot there, right? It means that I'm not struggling for questions. I'm struggling <laughs> which, to, to which question to to ask and 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 to and to reflect with my own stuff. What what uh, what what's spurred what's spurred me on? Um, and I, I I think it's about for for me. I didn't know it was about role models until I heard a role model. Mm. I, I didn't. I, I heard somebody, and I thought that's that that's that's impressive. That that's that that's takes the biscuit. Um, and what I'm, uh, if that person can get through that, mm. I, I can get through my stuff because my stuff yeah. is shit. Yeah, so I can relate to that totally. Um, I like to give birth mums, especially the younger birth mums, a little bit of hope. A little bit of, you know what, you'll never forget, but you are allowed to move forward. What you're feeling is, you know, it's real. Give them a bit of validation. Um, And that all comes from my experiences. So when I first started getting support only three years ago, and I've been a birth mum for nearly 20 years now, um, only three years ago, and I walked into one of these, this first ever group of birth parents, um, not knowing what to expect, but finding myself surrounded by young mums that were telling me stories, um, exactly the same as what I'd have gone through 20 years ago. And it's I soon came to realise that nothing had changed and not much had changed. Um so yeah, that's what I spend my time doing now, trying to break barriers and give these mums just a little bit of hope. Um, and I know mm. that some of the listeners there's a little bit like, well, you know, some of these mums might have done bad things. Um, but for me, when I say breaking barriers, I'm not talking about the ones that have been violent or you know really hurt their children because we know that there is people out there like that. Um, I'm talking about people being a victim like me. I was in a domestic violent relationship for five years. It was very hard to get out of and there was no support. I'm talking about mums with mental illness who, in fact, would struggle bringing up a a child but did all their contact need to be stopped. Um, And we've got mums that are born with disability. Um... So I, I, I like to give a voice for them people, you know, not everybody's a bad person. Like me, I was stuck in a, a, a situation. I got out of that situation and um, I always, I, some people might have heard my story before, but I do have an 18-year-old at home who I was allowed to keep only eight months after the final evening of my children being removed. And they were a full blood sibling. It was the same thing, domestic violence, violence relationship. Um, he was allowed to stay though because there'd been no violence for twelve for twelve months. I know it sounds crazy. Um, I'm very grateful every day that I've I've had eighteen years with my son with no intervention from social services. I got out when he was six months old. Um, a different social worker, completely different to the first one that I had. Um, it went above and beyond for me. Um, got me into a very safe place with some absolutely amazing support that I'd never had previous in them five years before that. Um, so, yeah, sorry, I think I've gone off. I've gone off topic, Anna. Have I gone off topic? No, not really. I, I, 
I always, I'll take you back to, 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 to the hope thing though. So yeah. what, what, what is it? What, what, what does, what does, what's hope for, what's hope for you? And hope, what's hope for me. Them? So the hope for me is to try and change some perspectives on the family. Um, to be able to show others that they don't need to suffer like I did. Um, and I mean, like, with no support, it was hard to get people to understand me. I never had anybody that understood me for many, many years. Um, and I needed that. I needed to somebody to validate what I'd been through. I wanted to, um, for, for so many years before I even got to meet another family like me, another birth parent, just somebody, somebody that could relate to me. So, yeah, if I can give back in this way, I feel like I'm getting something from it. I feel like I'm achieving something, not just for myself, but for others and maybe changing their life a little bit of how they see their future and better ways of trying to handle it and navigate through these really dark times. And it's not just the beginning, it's lifelong. It is a lifelong journey. Um, and, you know, I see parents that, come at the very beginning when they're either just going through care proceedings or the care proceedings have just ended and they're so lost but they do go off and it might be a few years down the line they'll come back and they've got several questions they've had time to reflect on the journey what's happened to them and they want to learn more about themselves and and others there's a lot there's a lot that comes from it and i think the hope is a gradual thing um, both parents have to be in a, the right mind to start accepting, a, you know, certain things. Certain things, in fact, it, it takes years for them to understand. So, yeah, I think just giving that hope and encouraging others to use the voice. Yeah. So I, I was, that, it, all of that, yeah, all of that. And... I'm, I'm, I was reflecting on why I think this way as I was listening to you. Um, what, what, but what I was thinking of was, so 20 years ago, there's no support, right? Yep. And, 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 and three years ago, you go into a room of birth mums and you show them that, uh 17 years after the 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 removal yeah. of, of your of your child you're still there yeah. and 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 somehow you figured you somehow you figured it and, and and figured it something within you has got you through that so it it to me, it's it's light. It's light at the end of the tunnel. It's mm -hmm. you know you said the, the darkest hours, right? So it, it it's light in those darkest hours. It, it's hope that it, you know I can get through this. And and the the reason that I think it landed for me like that was the I think the the worst thing that's happened to me uh, in in my life was a. Uh, loss of my best friend 24 years ago he died uh, and he was yeah he, he died i was going to go into all the details of it, it didn't really matter but he, he his his wife that he'd been married to for maybe a couple of years maybe was 10 weeks pregnant mm -hmm. and uh, and she she had uh yeah she had a, a terrible time as um you might imagine she had a mentor some she had a mentor somebody a, a, another young young widow hmm. and and then when she uh, so she, uh, as and then she did it she she passed it on yeah. Right. So you, you want 
I, I, I think I, I want to, I, I think we, we need people that have been through the experience that we're going through and come through the other side. And, and that's the ultimate hope. So you don't want, you don't want theory. I, I don't want theory. I want practice. Yes. I want, I want an example. Yeah. I, and that's why, you know, I, as I said, I was thinking about why, why, do, why am I, why am I drawing that particularly out? Um, but we want to learn from somebody that's, you know, a, a ahead of us on the journey. Yeah, and I wanted that so badly. Yeah, uh, yeah, and we want somebody that's ahead of us on the journey, uh, and 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 the journey it could be seen as the life journey, but it also could be the see the 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 the, the journey. I, I think m m as well as life, or and or I don't know, somebody that's been through us in in terms of um, finding themselves. Mm -hmm. Right, so they're 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 ahead of us on the on the the healing journey as well as the actual on ahead of us on the emotional journey and the kind of the factual journey. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, definitely. It, yeah. It, it's the it's it's the emotional stuff, I, and and therefore, if I want to learn and and I want to, like me now, I want to, uh, to learn from somebody that's ahead of me on discovering who we are, somebody who is freer of their trauma-bound identity. That's who I want to learn from. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so I found it wasn't... So I went to that group, and then after that, I was invited down to Westminster to talk, and it was with another group of birth parents that I'd never met before, and it was the first time I actually met Angela Fraser-Wicks now an MBA. Um, so she's a very similar story to mine. Um, she's just actually recently been in reunion. But because I met her when we was talking in Westminster, like it was anxious and a really hard day as it was. Um, and I was holding it together. And Angela's just said a little bit of her story, not much, but it was enough to put a lump in my, my throat and go, oh my goodness. There's somebody in the same room as as me that has experienced the exact same thing and near enough the exact same thing as me. And that woman now is, is my inspiration. Um, I take so much from Angela, her strength, um, the way she talks, how powerful she is, and, and the way that she expresses herself. Um, you know, she, you know, we, we can all own up to where our wrongs were in it all. Um, and we can have this open conversation about it as well. And we can also look at it that look down the line of how things have changed for us, where we are in life now and how did that happen? And I think a lot of people could, should take a lot away from that. Does that make sense? Yeah. So Angela Fraser Weeks is a birth mum, clearly. Yeah? She is, yeah. She um she's all over the news, I'm sure many of your listeners will know who Angela is as well. Um she is chair of trustees uh, with Family Rights Group. Um I'm actually on a, a FRG's Family Rights Group's panel. So we're on a panel of members together. She's done a lot of work, hell of a lot more work than me. She's been doing it for about 15 years now. My only regret with Angela is that I never met her earlier um, because I think that we would have been a team and my life wouldn't have been as dark, I feel as grim if I knew that there was somebody else out there just like me. And she was, she was there all along. I was just looking in the wrong places or maybe I just never knew where to look in them places. So it wasn't until I self-referred myself to Pack UK where things started to change for me. And I got that support and I got that understanding and I got that validation of what I was going through. Without that, and most probably COVID because COVID played a big part in me having a breakdown and me reaching out for that support. 
would I be here now talking to you? Would I be open to talking about adoption the way that I, I have done in the last three years? I don't think I would have done. And all it took was for a door to open and me find a charity that wanted to help me, which opened other doors for me to meet some amazing people who I could relate to and find the strength myself to be open and honest about my situation. Without that, I, would have, I wouldn't have been able to do it. Why, why do we wait? for it to get so bad like <laughs> because i don't think, unless you've been through it and i know it's different for you as an adoptee as you know the feelings and that are sort of pretty similar to what we do go through i know very different yeah i don't know that's that's arguable actually um but i think society when it we look at adoption as a whole society's got so many different perceptions on it you know, that it's, for me, adoption is not a one-size-fits-all. Every person that is involved is different and has different experiences. But when you're from outside the adoption world, we can't change them perceptions and we can't change how people react with us. So close friends. Um, I had friends for all then 20 years. Very recently, um, I decided when I started getting the support that they weren't actually the people for me because they didn't really have that real understanding of me. They tried, some of them did try. Some of them most probably made things a hell of a lot more worse for me. And it was it was starting to realise what was right and what was wrong. Um, and it went until I found that circle, my circle. And the, you, you hear that, don't you? Find your circle. Well, it took me 20 plus years to find my circle. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And but we're we're talking about two two different things here. We're talking about the external stuff, the the other people, and we're talking about the internal stuff. Mm. So, how do you see the relative importance of those two, Christy? It all needs to come together. We need to start change start changing them perceptions. But then we need in the adoption world as well to um. So we know that adoption is multi-layered. We know it's very complex. But I believe that there is ways that we can unravel that a little bit and let's start treating families individually. You know, I was just a victim. I just needed a little bit of understanding and maybe a bit of understanding of my childhood um, and what I've been through and what I've come into adulthood. When I lost my girls... Um, I was only 19 years old, Simon. I was very, very young. Um, but nobody wanted to question that. Nobody wanted... It was, this is it, you're done, see you later kind of thing. So what the traumas that came from that, nobody could have an understanding of it. So how do we... Without having the lived experience to, to be able to talk about it, to the public, how do we change their perceptions? But, don't, but doesn't it start within? Does that? I'd like to think it does, but does it? Or does it start okay. higher up because the government says this or else some framework says that? Or well, how people work with us? I think we, we, what, what I mean by start within, I mean, it, I mean we need to do a bit of processing first before we oh my goodness yeah but i think to help have that process you need another stand understanding from others to help you guide you through that it, it's such a hard journey on your own i found it very difficult for many many years to have an understanding of myself and what had actually happened but how could somebody have an understanding of me if I couldn't understand myself. Um, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it's a complicated one, isn't it? It's um yeah. I can't answer that. <laughs> well, the 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 idea that there is an answer is <laughs> is <laughs> a 
tricky one. Uh, we're, we're just, we're, we're, I guess we're just de debating it. Um, I, something that I heard from uh, an adoptee very early in the show, she she talked about, she, so she was big into advocacy and she, she, she talked about if you go anywhere near politicians, uh, so Christy mentioned uh, Westminster, so that that's where the House mm. of Parliament are in in the UK. So that's where the um, the government hangs out. She said, if you go anywhere near politicians and 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 you've got anger, um, there's some mm. anger. Yeah. They they um, cancel you. I think is the term used these days. Yeah, yeah, and I can relate to that. So in my younger days, and that when I was going through the process, nineteen years old, remember. Was very frustrated and most probably was very angry and i most probably did shout a lot but i was crying in trauma i was in yeah. fight mode it was but there was no then there we go again there was no understanding of why i was in fight mode nobody was bothered about me being in fight mode no well hopefully things have changed a little bit in 19 years um yeah, and I suppose bit, that's maybe, why, why it took me so long to seek out the support as well, that trust thing. So when I was in lockdown and my oldest child would have been turning 18 and I had no understanding of adoption, I didn't know what a reunion would be, if it was going to happen, how would I go about it, who was going to get hurt in this process, was I going to get hurt, was the girls going to get hurt, all them thoughts and then questions all raveled into me having a mental breakdown. And I need to, I've spent the last three years on a journey of healing, unraveling them things, of learning. Yeah, I think I've gone off topic again. No, no, not at all. No. Um, um, so what, what's healing? What does healing mean to you? Oh, having acceptance, um, accepting what happened to me having an understanding of where a lot of things stem from, you know, way before the domestic violence started, you know, growing up, there was a lot of things happened. And then the DV was a massive issue on its own um, caused me so many problems in life, you know, being, you know, like not having confidence and, I was controlled quite a lot. So, yeah, all them things that come with domestic violence, I don't really want to go into it all a lot. Um, no. But, um, yeah, I, I held a lot of rebuilding myself, I suppose. So when I got away from the domestic violence and I moved 50 miles away with a primal black bin bag and a, you know, a child, I started a new life for five years in a completely different town away from everything. And I think that's where the change started for me. Um, not automatically, not like it weren't massive things, but there was a time where, so my letterbox got stopped. Um, I had four years of letterbox, a social worker helping me write letters, blah, blah, blah. But they got stopped and then cut a the story short. Um, the adopters found the letters too, too hurtful, even though I didn't write the letters, the social workers wrote them. And at that time, I did find some counselling with a place called After Adoption Yorkshire, who were known now as PAC UK. Mm. Um, and the guy there, the counsellor there, who I know you know well, um, he taught, said something to me and them words stuck with me for 15 years. And it was, you can move forward. You can look after your child. Put yourself and your son first where do everything right for you and what you need to do for you and move forward and it was like somebody was giving me that i'm allowed that permission to move forward to just let go it is what it is let go for now and move on um but there were other traumas that came into it that weren't the only one you know there, there were other things like you think that social services are done now and all that story is closed behind you it, it really it wasn't um I'm not going to talk about that today. That's just a whole another story. But there were things that I had to battle down. I had to to get where I am now. I have been through so many experiences through social care. Um, I suppose it shaped me into who I am and how I speak now. 
and what I am so passionate about. And that all comes from the experiences. Yeah. So what's hitting me is um, with with this early stuff um, that went on, the early life events and the DV, there's, mm. it took a long time to ask for, go outside for help because there's a, because trust is gone, presumably. That must, that must have been a big factor. Like, trust was a massive factor, but I think... So I am one of the youngest of, uh, I'm a massive fan where a lot of older, older generations. Um, and it was then times of what happens in the family stays in the family and we don't talk about things. And that was happening when the DV was happening in my younger years. And I think that took that, that's how I was learned. You don't talk about it. And that went into my adult years as well. And it weren't until I started getting the support that I found, I started working out, do you know what? You are okay to talk. It's fine to be open about it. Let's talk about these things. You know, let's not, there's no point in pretending that they didn't happen because it all just comes out again. And that's what was happening. Trauma was coming out and out again. And because I didn't take that time, nobody took that time to discuss things with me or talk things through with me and let me have that understanding I talk about my own thoughts and feelings about it. So it was all pushed down for many, many years and it all it came out in bits, little bits, but I couldn't understand it. So uh, healing, uh, healing is about accepting rather than fighting. Yeah, I, I think, well, not so, well, well, yeah, of course, yeah. I think to heal, you have to accept. And that's took me 20 plus years to, to get my head around that. That's not an easy thing. It doesn't just come to you. Um, I think time is a healer, massive healer. It's a place where we can reflect as well. And it takes years of reflecting when learning and being able to see things from different points. So 10, 15 years ago, everything would have been everybody else's fault and... I didn't want to talk about it and if you brought it up like it was a no-go like it was just a no-go area it wasn't happening um there was times where depression kicked in and i would turn to to drink i wasn't an alcoholic i was a binge drinker it was easy to pick up that drink and numb myself on a bad day um that hasn't happened for years now since i started getting the support and that um yeah so I think healing comes with acceptance, understanding and validation. And how do you see the mix of internal and external with that? What do you mean? Well, I'm just asking you a question to so you keep on the on the on the direction that you're going. So uh I'm just I'm making a distinction between internal and external, right? So validation is an external thing, you mm. could say, right? Uh, understanding is an internal thing, maybe you know, just to simplify mm. it all. So I'm I'm just asking you the question about the in, uh, what's the mix for you in healing in terms of internal and external. Mm. Validation came with me when somebody first listened to my whole story. So everything that I had been through, everything that I questioned in my head, everything that... So for 20 years in that time, when I went through the courts, I was sent for a psychological report. And it said that I had a, a borderline personality disorder. So I spent 20 years thinking that I had that. And it wasn't until I had the breakdown and I, it, it, I went to the hospital myself and they told me, Krista, nobody can diagnose you with that within an hour's session for 20 years i thought that i had they'd left me on my own them courts they said that i had a uh, you know this this disorder or whatever it bloody was um and then i was validated in fact there was nothing wrong with me in that sense i just had a hard traumatic life i was validated so that myth of, that had been in my head for 20 years that there was something underlining with me wasn't true 
So I suppose I was validated in that sense as well, my story being validated. And having that feeling of being able to, it's okay, just knowing that it was real what you went through and that you are okay to move forward, it's okay. Um, it, I just got so much from that and that, that's my healing and I think I'll be on a healing journey for the, most probably the rest of my life. Um, it's not something that, you know, you'll ever move on from. Um, it's how we navigate them feelings and these emotions as we move through life. And the journey's not over. You know what I mean? I'm not in reunion. Will a reunion ever happen? I don't I don't know. I can't I can't answer them things. Um but yeah, my journey is a healing and it comes from both external and internal sides, I think. So what what do you think gets in our way of us um healing or thriving or both? The trauma. The trauma is bigger than any of it. And it takes so long to unravel it um, and get through them triggers. Um, yeah. For me, it was the trauma. I wish I could come up with a better question from that. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I know it seems it all sounds really dark, but it, it, it is just my truth and without them experiences i wouldn't be who i am now I'm, i i am a stronger person for it don't get me wrong um, oh, okay let, let me give you an example of what i mean um let me give you an example of, of what i what i mean what what could get in the way of us healing um is the belief that we can't mm, yeah yeah so that when I ask the question, what gets in a, a way of us thriving or healing or both, what I'm what I'm looking at is uh, be, beyond the trauma itself. I'm, I'm looking at something that's beyond the trauma itself. So, mm -hmm. for example, the belief that we can't heal that that's going to kind of get that's going to get in the way. Yeah, that's a hard one for me to answer. Yeah, I know it's, I mean, it's a really it's tough. A, it's a really tough question. It's a really tough question because for me, I, I suppose I've just got started getting used to the fact of this is my journey, and it's going to be a long journey, and it's going to have its ups and it's going to got be its downs. But I am going to do my best to make sure that I am okay in all this, to get positive out of it, and to have that positive mind of not letting the negativity come in for, in order for me to thrive. I went to uh, South Carolina last year working um, uh, through a guy that I met through the, through the podcast. I was an adoptee and runs a children's home. Uh, and I had a fantastic time. The people were brilliant. Um, the the warmth of their hospitality like, everywhere. Well, apart from the airport, the airport was just like any other airport. But you know the the, pe the people that I met in the in the town that were uh, people in the hotel, everybody, right? Was, and and I did some work in a, a children's home that the guy runs. Uh, the, um, the and did loads of work in 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 the elementary schools. What we what they call elementary schools. What we call primary schools. And the the whole week was brilliant. They couldn't have done more for me. Everything, brilliant people. There was two two things that I mentioned to the to, to my friend Danny. Uh, that I, I uh, one, a lot of the kids in the children's home were uh, had come out of homes where adoption hadn't worked. Mm. 
and Danny's an adoptee, and and he and I said, look, I, I really think you could use you you could build more empathy that you could you could inspire. I mean, he's an inspirational guy, and then you can you can put the icing on the cake if you use more of your story. Mm. Uh, and and I also there's only so I that was a thing that I thought he could uh, he he could um, th that he could do, and then there was there was one thing that I, I sh shared with him that I didn't agree with that I'd heard in the whole week, and that was the fact that he referred to the kids as broken. Mm. Would uh, would you take would you I, I I come up with this word umbrage right would, would you take I don't even want the even know what the word means right would 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 you would you see a challenge there with talking about kids as broken? That's another difficult one, and that because I think so many children have gone through so much trauma. Are they broken? Or do they just need a little bit of an understanding? I, I would be in the latter camp myself. I think mm. you are, are you? Yeah, I think so, yeah. 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 Would you consider yourself broken? I have been broken on more than one occasion, definitely. Um. But I'd like to say that I'm very good at, well, I wouldn't say very good, but I am capable of rebuilding, shall we say. Wait, you don't seem broken. Many times I've been broken, rebuilded, broken again and rebuilded. Do you consider yourself broken now? No, no, don't, no, no. I, no. I consider myself as moving on from that part and healing. Yeah. So I'm not broken, but I am healing. Yeah, slowly. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's the part it is. It's the journey. It's the journey. You know, um, we'll, we will go through dark, dark times. Anybody that's been through anything traumatic and it, it always seems to find a way to suit surface and that, but if you can find that way to navigate it, and deal with it better and have these, I don't know, I call it self-care in place, what's right for you, how you want to deal with things, um, how we deal with things. Um, I suppose it has to be right for you. I think that, yeah, and I think that journey starts with your, your inner self and not from everybody on the outside. So... Yeah, just rebuilding yourself to who you want to be. I think I spent many years, you know, listening to people saying, oh, you should be doing this and don't worry about it and what, whatever. You, you went through that, yeah, but it's over now. It's in the past and blah de blah de blah And I thought, no, I need, to, I need to be acknowledged to be able to move forward with my life, to be able to heal. It's just a shame that, Society can't take an understanding of what it takes to get there. Yeah. Yeah. I hope I'm making sense. I really you are, yeah. 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 <laughs> Perfect sense. Is there, is there something that you'd like to share that I've not asked you about? Oh, I don't know. Um, I think... For birth parents and that, um, for the whole size of adoption, that when we're thinking about birth parents and that language that we use. Um, so, so, so when I say language, um, a lot of things have come up in the last three years where I can reflect back to my, the old days where language was used in reports and that, and how things can be taken out of context. Um just to like maybe if the social workers are not listening to this, 
remember that in 20 whatever years later this is all going to resurface and people are going to read them reports and that and um, just think about how you're wording things um, and the other part is let's think about support for these parents that are just stuck in a bad situation stop leaving them in trauma we talk about mental health it's an open conversation these days towards what it was 20 years ago um we talk about you know my matters a healthy mind just um contemplate that when we think about removing these children from people in a very difficult situation um, and let's make it better for the child as well you know let's make it about the child identity having them doors open for the, any of them questions to be asked medical history you know there's things that have come up in the last 20 years that it wasn't until recently I didn't actually know that I could put things on file nobody told me I could put things on file for my children to read when the time was right never knew that Simon uh, there were things that could have been I added I've never heard that before. Absolutely all sorts that I was never told. No, I never um, yeah, so uh, yeah, I could go on and on and on, Simon, but they're the ones that stand out for me. And let's um we need more support places for birth parents. Um, you know, we've got the likes of PAC UK who are absolutely fantastic. Pause is another organization, but they only support women. Um, and depending on where you are in the UK, there's no support at all. I know people that travel 60 odd miles to get to one of my groups, you know, um, on public transport. You know, let's let's just be a little bit. It's not one cat fits all. Everybody's different. Um, but I believe that everybody deserves some kind of understanding and a little bit of support. We shouldn't believe in people in trauma the way that we do. Um, and I definitely don't want these young mums to go through what I have in the last 20 years. So, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Brilliant. Thanks, Christy. Thanks, listeners. We'll speak to you very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.